Christ on my mind. Go out, who knows what I might find? I'm out here on my grind. Look close, I'm the last of my kind. Last of my kind. Well, Glenn, I can remember real well. Sitting in my cell, Chino State Prison. And I don't know if you remember this, but there was a lot of dairies and cow fields around there. Mm -hmm. So the scent of cow poop was in the air. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just bored, but I'd come down from my heroin kick and I was starting to feel a little better. And then I heard a guard come by and said, hey, any of you inmates want some religion, you can come on down down, walk down the hall. And I'd heard about church services in the prison. I heard about chapel services. And I heard that sometimes they had girls come in and sing some songs, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And so I'll be real honest with you. I thought that's what I was going to get if I went down there. Right. And instead, I see you, a little younger version at the time. Mm -hmm. But it was you. And then I saw you talking to these other inmates and you were embracing them hugging them and I go it was just a weird picture I go man we're in a in a prison people are upset because they don't know where they're going to be sent how many years they're going to do the old indeterminate sentence law at that time and here you are you're like at home and you're a straight looking guy to me I didn't see any tattoos you didn't look gang related you know the 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 type of people that I knew and so then when you got up to speak, the words that you had to share were just heaven sent. And I was a hurting soul. And one of the things that I know that that's you is, I could tell too that you were there because you cared. You know, this wasn't some hireling thing or something like that. Because when you communicated, that's all I received, you know, is this is somebody who cared. And then you talked enough to know that you weren't judging me like everybody else that I knew for my crimes, for my lifestyle, for anything. That was what made that day special. And then that was the birthplace where the Bible says you must be born again. That's where I was. I'd played Let's Make a Deal with God before, of course. God, mm -hmm. if you get me out of this jam. But that day, I knew in my knower that when you spoke, and you made it real clear, you brought the cookies down where I could reach them. Mm -hmm. Wasn't some big theological, you know, you gotta go to seminary. But you didn't play games, I remember, either. You weren't saying, hey, just say a little prayer and everything's gonna be rosy posy. No, you gave the real deal that, hey, this would be the beginning mm -hmm. of your walk with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And as I'm sitting here next to you, I'm just grateful, thankful, appreciative more meaningful than you could ever imagine because that day turned my whole life around. Well, this day is a blessing to me to hear you share that. But you know, the credit belongs, of course, to our Lord. Yeah. But uh, he is in the business of changing lives and he's obviously changed yours as well as he's changed mine. And here we are, how many years later? <laughs> Oh boy, I don't know, 40, 40 some? Right around there somewhere, that many years later, just to get into reminisce. Not like saying those were the good old days, because these are the best days. That's right. Man, you got a beautiful wife, I got a beautiful wife, we got kids, we got grandkids, and God's not done with you mm -hmm. or me yet. It reminds me of Joshua and Caleb when they were talking about maybe, remember when Moses sent out his spies? Right. And here, uh, Joshua was like, uh, or Caleb, they were like in their 80s. Look at, yeah. here you are, you know. That's where I am. We're, we're talking about all that stuff. But, uh, you know, Caleb goes, hey, Joshua, give me that mountain over there. And I know that this is, this is the highlight. This is the day the Lord's made. Uh, uh, thanks for letting me come on over here to your house, as you and your wife, making the time. And thanks for loving me when I was unlovely. I mean, I've been through some stuff where a lot of people go, you know, that preacher, he's done, he's finished, counted me out. But I know that you've uh, always been 
you know, a friend and a fan and somebody who's prayed for me. And uh, but was she straight with me? Hey, you know. Well, it's been my privilege to be honest. You've been very important to me, but you were important to to our heavenly Father. The God Squad. A lot of people <laughs> taking that nowadays. The God Squad. But you're the original God Squad that I know. Yeah, it's a it's a nickname. It was given to us by the uh, staff at Juvenile Hall in Alameda County. But uh, when Eldridge Cleaver traveled across the nation uh, giving his testimony, the name God Squad went across the nation. Mm. And so that's why it's so well known. Well, you know, I was, I was wondering, I guess, when I first knew it was follow-up prison ministries. And then I had the privilege after I got out to go to some of your seminars, mm -hmm. uh, Santa Cruz campgrounds over there, mm -hmm. and going to things. I saw how important follow-up follow up is. Right. What we don't inspect, we can't expect. Uh -huh. And uh, we all need follow-up in our life, following up and making visits, calls. Well, it's a tragic to me that so many organizations count the, the uh, scalps, you might say, uh, the number of people that, that uh, make some kind of profession. But as you indicated five years later, where are they? Exactly. Yeah, because uh, it's not enough to just uh, believe. You've got to have a relationship with Christ, and obviously you have that. I can remember you telling me in a very nice way you said, well, let's see where you're at in five years. And then you, it was in the context of discipleship uh, and maturity. But I took it like, you know, is a negative thing like, uh, well, we'll see if you make it or this like that. Until it's kind of like when your dad says something to you when you're a kid, you don't get it till you have your own kid. <laughs> and then I realized later, yeah, this is not just a one decision. This isn't a sign in a card or you know, raising a hand, but this is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And as I got in there, when you say that to somebody, when you said that to me, where does that come from when you're thinking that? I've been accused of uh, judging people. I say, I'm not a judge, I'm a fruit inspector. And in five years, you should bear fruit. And the fruit would say that you're real or cast doubt upon you. Because there are a lot of people that uh, are religious, but not everybody is a, is a follower of Christ. Right. There's a difference. In five years, it's just a matter of a word of, uh, I want to see where you are in five years. Let's see the fruit. Well, I've shared that with thousands of people. Oh. And I've followed up with and shared that thing, like I said, because I, I've learned to trust God and test people. Mm -hmm. That it's easy to say things, especially in prison or jail. That's the land of a, a promise. I promise when I get out, I'll do this. But I share with people, no, oh, well, you're locked up in there. You can change your life around. Because yeah. that's where it worked for me. I, I'd learn what I learned in that chapel, and then I'd go back to my cell. And somebody gave me a Bible, and I started reading it. And then through the years, you were just... That's the cool part of it is you stayed a friend through the years, all these last 40 plus years, and here we are today. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> it's just invigorating to me, exciting to me. I mean, it's like... That's exciting for me too, buddy. Oh, not, as, not as exciting. Well, maybe, you know, but I'm just telling you, my spiritual father's here. You birthed me, you know, and Beverly, I've known your wife for all these years too at a distance, not in the same way, but if it wasn't for our wives... Right. Man. That's right. Another right. gift from God. I remember walking out of uh, DVI Tracy one day after a service, and uh, we had a good time in the service. And one of my associates asked the chaplain, "Do you think those those men back there are real? And they're committed?" And I remember he said, uh, "I don't know. Time will tell." There you go. <laughs> yeah. And and that's the cool part of it is we never know who's listening yeah. and. When you saw me that day, and then you hugged me that day, and that was just weird. Like I said, it's from my childhood. I actually saw a picture the other day. We were going through all my pictures, mm -hmm. and I saw a picture where my dad kind of had his hand on me a little bit. It wasn't a hug, but that was like, wow. blew my mind. I mean, just 
Yeah. Certain things, uh, we don't know what people are going through. And we don't know who's listening. But man, I was listening that day. And like I said, I've been on top of the mountain. I've been in the valley. But you know what? I, you know, You're on top today. I'm on top today. And it's been a long run now. It's been a long run. Thank you, Jesus, for every bit of it. But it, it truly is the best days of my life. When you say how happy you are now with your wife, you know, mm-hmm. and how life is going it's the same thing like that. And I love it because our wives have their own little story and flavor to add to it. Because they've been <laughs> they do. You know, the one serving us and helping us. And they're that, that yeah. uh, when the Bible says he finds a wife, finds a good thing. Yeah. Both of us recognize more than ever what a good well, thing. Well, I sure found a good thing. Yeah. I know that. <laughs> I want to thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Okay, brother. You know, I love you. I know. And I love you too, pal. You're very important to me. And you're very important in the kingdom. So just keep going. Look close on the last of my kind. We in the streets. We in the streets.